it's a twilight landscape. We have a number of uh, uh, reversals and contra antithesis, as you see, the mole, blind mole, that burrows in the, under the, the, the earth, and then the alpine scenery, uh, which makes vision also impossible. Dante is evoking the heights and the lowest possible point of sight with the mole. Uh, the sun is setting and the night is approaching. It is as if the whole, so the solidity of the world around him is vanishing, is disappearing. That's the experience that he's having. And this very moment, he's appealing to the memory of the reader and the imagination of the reader. It is as if that when the world outside seems to be failing us, we have this part of this inner light, this inner possibility of recollection of the world or imagining the world, okay? Uh, he's specifying what some of the claims about the inner lights that he says we have within us could be. Uh, he had just said that. But also he's preparing this extraordinary second apostrophe to the imagination. Dante is, we are approaching the center of the, of, of, of the universe, this poetic universe, and Dante reminds us that this is a work of the imagination. Why does he do this? What is this? Uh, what does he say about the imagination? The first thing that he says about the imagination, oh, imagination, which so steals us at times from outward things that we pay no heed, though a thousand trumpets sound about us. Who moves thee if the senses offer thee nothing? It's the same question he had been asking earlier. Right? Where do, where do our, where do our choices come from? Where do, why, do, why do we do what we do? Is it because uh, uh, a power from the outside moves us, or is there something that, that is within us? Now, this question is asked in uh, slightly <coughs> different terms, in terms of the imagination. The imagination is a power that, that's what he, um, he, he the way he describes it, that uh, describes it, that removes us from the outside world. Has the, there's such a power. In other words, it's not just the imagination that translates sensory experiences into images for the benefit of rational judgment. You know, this is the triadic Aristotelian order. What does the, ima the imagination is the middle ground between the senses, the work of the perception, and the work of reason, right? This is uh, a triadic pattern that Dante uh, could have found in Aquinas, who in turn found it certainly in Aristotle. That's the, the way it proceeds. Yes, another imagination that he's talking about now. An imagination that removes us from the outside world. It frees us that it needs nothing of um, the, the world of perception. It is a power that in many ways that steals us from it. It's a power that, um, how does he describe it? It comes from the outward things that we pay no heed through a thousand trumpets sound about us. It's a, it's, a, it's a faculty that is completely free from the outside world, a power that we have within us to imagine worlds that don't even exist, to imagine things that without the solicitations of what lies uh, outside us and continues. Um, a light moves thee, which takes form in the heavens, either of itself or by will which directs it downwards. Of her impious deed, and then he goes on describing uh, three images of anger. At the point in which Dante is approaching the center of the his world, we are, this, we, are, we are witnessing, we are shown the power of the imagination as a visionary faculty, as a faculty that is not a transcription of the real world. And that one wonders why he has to make this kind of claim. It's, it's, uh, it, it encompasses the real world, and yet something is something that almost prophetic, something that does not come from uh, 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 the contact with the world. <laughs>